Hey everybody, today we're going to be checking out a really cool steam locomotive. This is the Lionel 3 Rail O Scale 2100 Decapod, and it's coming up right now on Eric's Trains. <laughs> All right, here's the box that the Decapod arrived in. Model number 2331300, Erie Legacy Russian Decapod number 2445, with an on the water date of September 25th, 2023. Now, on the night that I am unboxing this, I'm unboxing multiple locomotives. I already unboxed the Pensy I1 and the New York Central Dreyfus, and so I'm using the same knife to unbox all of them, and that's this thing. This is the Ontario Knife Company's old hickory hunting knife. So if it looks familiar, if you've seen it in a previous video, well, they were all filmed on the same night. <laughs> there we go. Lionel is shipping so much stuff right now. It's just nonstop unboxings. <laughs> it's kind of light for a steam locomotive, but then again, I think it's pretty small. So there's the box tag. Again, Erie Legacy Russian Decapod number 2445. Legacy and Bluetooth control, Legacy rail sounds, fan driven smoke, and 042 minimum curve. The other two locomotives I unboxed tonight, the Dreyfus and the I-1, were both 072. Although I'm not sure why the I-1 was. It's pretty small. And there's your instruction booklet. Always read these. And one, two, three. That's nice. I like it. I don't know if that's the right shade of blue. Probably isn't, but I think it looks nice. <laughs> and there's the receiving hole for the wired tether. That's right, this thing has a wired tether rather than the infrared tether. So if we take the tender out here, Love that Erie logo, but there is the wire tether. Now, I've heard that the reason they did this is because the space inside this boiler is pretty cramped. And because of that, they had to use the tether and put most of the electronics in the tender rather than having a lot of electronics in the locomotive itself. And looking up in there, I can buy it. It does look pretty cramped up in there. I mean, you've got a smoke unit for the smokestack. I think this has the swinging bell. If I'm not mistaken, I, I could be wrong. We'll have to check that out. I don't think it has the smoking whistle. And I also heard rumors, you know, on Discord and so forth, that because this is XMTH, something about the drive mechanism, it didn't leave room for how Lionel does it, so they had to put a lot of the electronics in the tender. But anyway, you slice it, they had to put a lot of the electronics in the tender, and that's why they ended up using a wired tether rather than the infrared tether. They usually do that on small locomotives like the B6, uh, the upcoming 040, whenever that arrives, that uses a wired tether. So it's not unheard of, and I'm okay with it. I mean, they have their reasons. And personally, I kind of like it when they use the wired tether because it increases the electrical footprint of the locomotive because instead of just having two pickup rollers on the locomotive, you've now got two pickup rollers there plus two more pickup rollers on the tender and you've got a larger electrical footprint. Therefore, it's easier for the locomotive to go through switches and dirty track and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, I think this thing looks really nice. I have no doubt some people will complain about that blue, but to me, it looks really nice and I'm happy with it. So let's go ahead and get it on the layout. All right, and here it is on the layout. Man, this thing looks fantastic. So let's talk about the real thing and then we'll get back to the Lionel model that we have here. This type of locomotive is known as a Russian decapod. That's kind of a confusing name. Where does that come from? 
Well, the decapod part is a little bit easier to understand. These locomotives were two 10-0 locomotives, meaning they had two wheels up front, 10 drive wheels, and zero wheels on the trailing truck, or no trailing truck whatsoever, in other words. So with 10 drive wheels, well, deca means 10, and so these things became known as decapods. Now, why were these things called Russian decapods? Were they made in Russia, or were they made from Russian parts? No, they were actually made for Russia. So during World War I, Imperial Russia ordered approximately 1,200 decapods from American builders. However, when the Bolshevik Revolution happened around 1917, only 857 had actually been delivered to Russia, and there were still about 200 or so that were either awaiting shipment or in the process of being built. Now, of course, during World War I here in the States, the railroads were being managed by the USRA, the United States Railroad Administration, in order to get them to work as one cohesive system and also to make sure they ran efficiently so as to maximize the effort for the war. And so the USRA mandated that those stranded locomotives be adapted for American railroads. Now, Russian railroads run on a slightly different gauge than American railroads. They use a five-foot gauge instead of the American four-foot, eight-and-a-half-foot gauge. So those 200 or so locomotives had to be regaged for four foot eight and a half inches and they were put to work on American railroads. Now prior to this, the decapods had not been terribly successful on American railroads, but putting those 200 or so stranded locomotives to work really allowed the decapod to get a foothold in American railroading and they proved quite successful. Now they weren't powerful enough for big, long, heavy trains, but they proved great for smaller trains on branch lines and that's where they served and they continue to serve even after the USRA was dissolved after World War I, many of them served until the end of steam in the late 50s and early 60s. And then, of course, because of the success of the Russian decapods here in the States, more decapods followed. So not all decapods are Russian decapods. There were Baldwin decapods. The Pensy I-1 was a decapod. I'll actually be reviewing a Pensy I-1 very soon. And fortunately, quite a few decapods survive to this day. Probably the most famous Baldwin decapod is Strasbourg 90, and the most well-known Russian decapod is likely Frisco 1630, which is currently operational at the Illinois Railway Museum. All right, so now let's talk about Lionel's rendition of the Russian decapod. Now, this is a new Lionel model, but it's not a new model entirely. This is an XMTH Russian decapod. Yeah, this is one of the toolings that Lionel bought from MTH a couple years ago, and now they've come out with their own Russian decapod. So these appeared in Lionel's 2023 Volume 1 catalog, and they arrived in, I think it was late November of 2023. Now in that catalog, they offered the new Russian decapod in six road names. They did Erie 2445, which is what we have here. They did Frisco 1630, which I mentioned earlier. They did Minneapolis, Northfield, and Southern number 505. They did Philadelphia and Reading number 1126. They did Seaboard 544 and U.S. Army number 1918. And one of the cool things that Lionel did here is that the USA, Seaboard, and Philadelphia and Reading versions have a slightly different tender than the other ones where it has this sort of platform hanging off the back of the tender. It looks really cool. And for that reason, I think I eventually want to try to get either the Seaboard or the U.S. Army version because I'd love to have that variation in my collection. Now, regardless of which road name you get, the price is the same. The retail price on these new Russian decapods was right at $1,300, $1,299.99. I'll talk more about the price toward the end of the video. All right, now I want to take just a moment to show you some of the features and idiosyncrasies of this model. So starting up front, you can see we've got a beautiful pilot here, and there's a dummy O-scale couple here. It's non-operational. Now, along with spare traction tires in the box, you will find a dummy O-gauge coupler, a big lobster claw like that. So if you want to double head this engine, you can undo this screw on top of this coupler, remove this dummy O-scale coupler and replace it with the dummy O-gauge coupler and that will allow you to double head it. The next thing I wanna talk about is right here on the underside of the locomotive. You may notice this gigantic gap where you can actually see all the way through it. And at first glance, you might think that's sort of a mistake and I've actually heard some people complaining about that gap. 
But in fact, that gap is prototypical. It was present on the MTH model, and it's present here on the Lionel model. These Russian decapods, owing to the small drivers and just the way they were built for the Russian railroads, they actually did have a big gap like this under the boiler, so that is not a mistake. As I mentioned earlier, this locomotive does not have the whistle steam smoke effect owing to a lack of space inside the boiler, but it does have the swinging bell effect, which is one of my all-time favorite effects. And so you've got your little brass bell here, and when activated, the bell will swing back and forth in time with the sound of the bell, and the effect is absolutely mesmerizing. When it comes time to connect the locomotive and the tender, as I said during the unboxing, we've got this wired tether as opposed to the normal infrared connection, and that's because of the limited space in the boiler for electronics. And to connect it, it's very easy. There's a socket underneath this drop plate, and you just line it up, you can almost feel it. You don't really have to see it at all. And then you push it in and it'll lock in there and then you're good to go. And then after that, you just line up the drawbar. Make sure the drop plate is on top like that and you're good to go. And lastly, on the back of the tender, we've got this water hatch and when you lift it up, you've got the master control switches for the locomotive. So you've got run program, Bluetooth on and off, and smoke on and off. All right, the last thing we're gonna do before we start this thing up is... All right, so anybody who's been a fan of this channel for any length of time should know what I'm gonna pick for BFIMO, and that, of course, is the swinging bell effect. I'm a big sucker for it. As I said, it's one of my favorite features ever, and so, yeah, that's a no-brainer, the swinging bell. All right, now it's time to have some fun. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Train one brakeman to train one conductor. East end of the train is clear. Clear to depart westbound on your signal. Over. Train one conductor, station work is complete. You're okay to proceed. Let's pull. All right, so like all high-end Lionel Legacy locomotives made these days, this does have a choice of five whistles and five bells. We'll check out the whistle first. My favorite whistle is whistle number five, and I think it's the same whistle that they used on the older cab forward, which is one of my favorite whistles that Lionel has ever done. So my favorite is number five. Let me know which whistle is your favorite. And now let's check out the bells. My favorite bell is number three. Let me know which one is your favorite. And lastly, here's a sampling of some of the crew talk sounds, and while those are going on, I'll show you some nice close-ups of the locomotive. Train order, say holding sighting until 44 clears, and we can take the main. You should be through any minute. Power, station work complete and ready to head east. Can I pull? Over. Things are taking a little longer than usual. Sit tight until I can get the line cleared. Out. My call's full. Out. Call out, just heading your way. Make sure everything's good. Ease off the coal till we get a signal. Conductor train one to the train crew. 
All right, so there you have it, Lionel's new Russian Decapod. I love this thing. It looks great, runs great, and sounds great. So what's not to like? I think it's a great locomotive, and I'm really glad I have one of these in my collection now. And like I said, I'd really like to add that Seaboard version as well because it has that really cool platform extension on the back of the tender. Now, like I said earlier, regardless of which one you get, the price is the same. The retail price on the Russian Decapod was right at $1,300, $1,299.99. But keep in mind that if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a decent discount off that retail price. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at LegacyStation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at Patreon.com slash Eric's Trains. Patreon supporters get access to all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world not only to me but to the future of this channel and an extra super big thank you goes out to my premium tier Patreon supporters. You'll see their names at the end of this video. Lastly, if you'd like to pick up some Eric's Trains merchandise, you can check out my online store at ericstrains.com store. You can get t-shirts and jackets and sweaters and mugs and coffee cups and all sorts of cool stuff, so feel free to check that out. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. To discuss this model and any other O-Gage trains, check out the O-Gage Railroading online forum at ogrforum.ogagerr.com.